Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you here in the sanctuary. Grace and peace to you in the balcony. Grace and peace to you who are worshiping with us online from Tallahassee or Ormond Beach or down in South Florida or even in other countries. We are grateful for your presence together with the Lord today. We have a, a couple of announcements just to kind of keep an eye on what's going on in the church today. Uh, this afternoon, we're having a Zoom call um, as part of our ongoing discussion on faith, race, and anti-racism. Our conversation today will be looking at some scriptures and some biblical foundations that give us the assurance that God cares about this conversation. This is not a political conversation. This is one of faith and discipleship. Uh, so that'll be today at 3 o'clock. Uh, you can email Linda if you would like the, the link to that conversation. Um, we also, and I'm excited about this for all of our, our dog park people, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, right across the street, we have the gift of Riverside Park. Um, and in the back corner, um, there is a dog park, John Gorey Dog Park, and our church has tried to have, we, we have an ongoing relationship with the folks that run and keep up with the dog park. And so we are going to do a blessing of the pets next this, this Saturday, November 21st. It'll be 10 a.m. You're welcome to show up with your dogs and cats if you want, or birds. Um, but it will just be aware it'll mostly be dogs because it's a dog park. Um, we're going to say some prayers. We're going to bless pet, pets. Excuse me. And as a church, we're going to be generous and share some dog treats with the furry friends and love our neighbors of all kinds. Uh, so that's this Saturday at 10 a.m. And then next Sunday, just so y'all know, if you are hanging out in the sanctuary, we are starting the season of Advent, leaning towards Christmas. Um, and so next Sunday, I know, yes. Some people are going, yes. Some people are going, oh, I do not need one more thing. Uh, so for those of you who say, I don't need anything else, rest assured, our Advent theme this Advent is the weary world rejoices. We're taking that line from Oh Holy Night and we're gonna lean into it this season and really remember that in our weariness, in the weariness of the world, that's where Jesus comes. Uh, and so that will be, we will, we will be focusing on that prayer, looking for the light of Christ to come. Um, but we start off next Sunday, we're gonna hang the greens. Um, because of COVID again, it'll be, look a little bit different, but we do need some help um, fluffing wreaths, fluffing Christmas tree branches, because um, there's a lot of greenery that we're going to put up over the course of the week. And so if you're willing to help next Sunday, just plan on sticking around a little bit after worship. You can stay in your pews and we will bring greenery to you to kind of fluff and get the sanctuary ready for the coming of this season. All right, that being said, um, we're going to pause. And I know typically this is the point where we look around and we wave. But before we do that, just so y'all know, I've had several people come this morning and just say, I need to be in worship because it's been a rough week. <laughs> it's been a rough couple of weeks. And so I want to, before we do anything else, I want to take a moment to just set before God and open in prayer um, and just be present with God just as we are present with one another. So let's pause. I invite you, however you're feeling, wiggle out some of those, those things, stretch out a little bit, sit comfortably. Let's take a breath and sit before God. God, we come to worship, we gather around screens, we gather in the sanctuary, we come because we need you. And Lord, sometimes it feels like we're the ones doing all the work and we're weary, and yet, Lord, your word tells us again and again and again that you choose us first. So for each person gathered in worship, may you wash over us the assurance and knowledge that we are loved, that even now you see us. You hold us, you know us. Even burdened, you see us, you know us, you love us. Even weary and exhausted, you see us, you know us, you love us. Even if we feel alone or distant, Lord God, you see us, you know us, you love us. So may you remind us that this time is yours not simply because we offer it to you, but because all of time is yours and you, mighty God, are beyond it. So hold us, Lord. Lift us, Lord. 
see us and know us and love us. In Jesus we pray. Amen. At this, I want you to take a second, look around, because there is something about being seen, even if you're looking at faces of people you don't know. Pause, make eye contact, wave with somebody. You are not alone. That's part of the gift of worship. If you're online, do a shout out in the comments um, or reach out and send a text or message to somebody else. You are seen, you are known, you are loved. morning. At this time, please join me in our opening prayer. God of all creation, thank you for the wonderful things you have made. Thank you for the universe full of stars and planets. Thank you for our world full of life. Thank you for making each one of us. Thank you for loving each one of us. We offer you ourselves and all the gifts you have blessed us with. Take us and use us to share your love with the world.
may be seated. Our responsive reading this morning comes from Psalm 56, verse 10 through 13. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I will fulfill my vows to you, O God, and will offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. For you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O God, in your life-giving light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Part of what we have been doing uh, in in worship since the pandemic, and, and also just in general, is when we read scripture, it's not just something that we hear, it is a way of life that we are called to inhabit and live into. Um, and so our, our series right now, we are in a three-week series on gratitude, um, being people of a heart of gratitude, no matter the circumstances, in all circumstances, we're called to give thanks. Uh, and there's a German theologian known as Mike, uh, Meister Eckhart, uh, and one of, one, of those, one of the quotes from that theologian, he says, if thank you is the only prayer you ever pray, it's enough. Now I would say, you know, you can't just pray one time, you can't just say thank you once and then call it forever. Um, but I do think there's something about that and, and what happens when we give gratitude is we are coming near to God. And so our prayer response this morning is incredibly simple. We're just gonna take some time to sit before God and say thank you. Um, And so I invite you, again, sit comfortably. If you wanna, I know sometimes I like to open my hands as a way of just saying like, God, I'm giving you thanks. Just whatever prayer posture is most comfortable for you. Um, Let us pray, let us give thanks to God and simply say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Let's pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. All right, at this time, we're going to shift gears for a moment, and we're going to have participate in our children's moment. Um, Now, again, typically, we would invite the kids to come forward, and we would all sit up here on these steps. Um, But again, with social distancing, we're going to invite you guys to stay in your seats and sit up. And it looks like our kids that are fifth grade or younger are currently in the restroom. So, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. For you kids at home worshiping online, we need you to pay extra attention. Um, And then church, we are all children of God, so we're all gonna participate in this kid's message, okay? Right? So so brush off off that childlike innocence and joy. God says, come to me, or let the children come and uh, be, be as these. So our kid's message this morning, we are gonna practice a practice of gratitude. Um, Again, it's something that we do. It's not just something that we are supposed to do. Uh, And I I find in general with things like prayer and gratitude, like there's a whole list of things that I'm like, yes, good Christians do these things and I should do them more often. And so what happens is as a disciple, I get caught up in that should place. I should do this. Um, When if I spent less time feeling guilty about the shoulds and just spent some more time practicing the things, that's that is where real discipleship hits the road. Um, And so part of the grace of Jesus is Jesus says, look, I've already forgiven you and given you grace. I have already set you free. So take a breath. You are free to step forward and practice these things. So do not let the guilt of not doing something keep you from doing it. Did that make sense? Let me say that again. Do not let the guilt of not doing something keep you from doing it because Jesus is the one who sets us free. 
So we are going to practice gratitude. And for that, what I want you to do is, before we get started with this exercise, I need you to come up like, in your brain with like, five simple things you're grateful for. Like, take a second, think about them. They could be things like your family. They could be things like acorns that are falling on the ground. Uh, we could be grateful for, I don't know, I said frogs randomly last Sunday, so maybe we're grateful for frogs. Um, but take a second, think about it, and be ready, because we're going to do an exercise, and you're going to have to like, say things out loud. All right? So be ready. All right, you ready? All right, you're looking at me stone-faced, and I don't know what you're doing at home, so I'm, I'm going to let I'm going to ask that again. Are you all ready? Yes. Ready. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. When I was a camp counselor at Warren Willis, we had a game where we did this thing, and we would, like, clap twice and then, like, point. Um, so we're going to do something similar with this gratitude exercise. We're going to clap twice and then say something we're grateful for, okay? But I know rhythm is kind of an issue for super traditional churches, um, so we're going to practice, we're going to get in the rhythm just for a second, okay? So we're going to clap twice and point. Clap twice and point. Clap twice and point. Keep going. Now remember, every time you point, you're going to give thanks to God, so we're going to point up. Clap, point up, clap, point up. Now every time you point up, I want you to say something that you're grateful for, okay? Ready? Starting. One, two, ready, four, thankful for food, dogs, candy, mats, grass, clouds, keep it going, sunshine, people, neighbors, one more, one more, one more, and then we're just going to say thank you, again, thank you. Thank you. One last time. Thank you. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. So, families, fun fact that is something you can do around the dinner table. That is something you can do on your car rides. I mean, maybe if you're the adult driving, maybe not be the one clapping. Um, but yes, so if you miss this activity, um, you are welcome. I know dad of family, you're going to have to catch them all up um, so we can, y'all can practice that at home. Because again, gratitude is something that we practice. And for those who participated, like, I mean, come on, there was something good about hearing other people say thank you, right? When we give thanks to God, it's good for us. It's good for those around us. And the beautiful thing, if, if I, I mean, and here's the thing, if we believe God is with us, there's no way God didn't look at that silly exercise and like crack up, you know? Like that thing, that act of gratitude, that act of clapping and coming together, like these are the things that bring joy and delight to the heart of God. And that's part of what we're doing, right? This worship thing is not just some like serious devotion that we offer. We come together to share joy with the heart of God and one another. And kids, you guys are especially good at that. So you are a special gift to all of us. All right? So we're going to pray for our kids' message. We do a prayer where we, we go like this. We go, ready, pray, and then I'll pray and you repeat after me. Okay? You ready? Ready, pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for silly moments. Thank you for people that clap hands with us. Thank you for all the things that people thanked you for just now. Help my heart to be like your heart, just like Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to continue practicing gratitude. Um, and at this time, as a moment of offering, we are going to give space to lift up and give our gifts to God as an act of gratitude. Um, if you are here in the sanctuary, we have a plate there at the entranceway if you would like to uh, leave your gifts in that plate. Again, we're not passing the plate because of, you know, we're trying to avoid common touch surfaces. Um, and for those at home who have been giving online and faithfully mailing in your checks, we are incredibly grateful. Thank you, church, for making the missions of our church possible. Let us give thanks and praise to God through this time of worship. If you have prayer requests online, lift them up, and we're going to come together and pray.
Let's give to God. Almighty God, we praise you from whom all blessings flow. Lord, we praise you as part of all creatures here below. We praise you above you, heavenly host. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being the God who would gather us together. We thank you that you are the God who lifts up hearts, that you are the God who comes to bless those who are weary, that you are the God who brings restoration and joy and hope. So for all of the gifts that are given in this time and this week and yet to come, Lord, we ask that you would bless them and use them for your mission and ministry, that we as a church would be here in the community authentically meeting our neighbors and sharing your love, empowering others to your abundant life of Christ. Lord, we lift to you prayers of thanks that have been named, we lift to you prayers of thanks that have been unnamed. Lord, we thank you that you give us the strength even when we're weary to give you thanks and praise. Lord, we lift to you also prayers for those that are, have upcoming surgeries and medical procedures this week. For those that it, within our congregation, we lift a particular prayer um, for those that are named and those that are unnamed, for those that have procedures on Tuesdays or Wednesday or Thursday. Lord, may you cover them with your grace and surround the medical team that will be surrounding them as well. We thank you for the gift of modern medicine. Lord, we lift to you those among us and those in the community that are in a season of weariness. Lord, with, we know that in this season, seasonal depression starts kicking up. We do know that COVID has put an extra layer of weariness, and so we especially pray for those who are having a hard time this morning. Again, may your spirit lift them. And also, Lord, for those spaces where we feel that weariness, and we feel the need to pull on our boots and strap up and move on, Lord, give us your strength when we don't have it. Again, be that God of renewal and resurrection and new life. Lord, we pray for our neighbors. 
We pray especially for our neighbors that are hungry as we lift into the Thanksgiving season and we lift thanks for food. Lord, we remember those who are also hungry. And we remember your command to, to love our neighbor and share what we have. And so we pray, Lord, right here and now, we pray blessings on the Wednesday meals that are given out in your name. May you bless those who receive them, not because it's some transaction between the needy and those that have, but rather because you are present and you love all people. May this be a space where we authentically live into your grace and your mission. Lord, we thank you for the gift of children in the sanctuary, in the homes, in our community. Uh, we also name that loving and caring for children can be wearisome for parents and teachers and those that surround them and love them. And so for those caretakers, may you give an extra dose of patience and grace. May you lift them as well. We thank you for those who stand on the edge and lean forward to care for the health and wholeness of our neighbors and our community. We especially pray for first responders. We pray for those in our society that stand for peace and work for it. We thank you for those who are on the front ends in the medical industry, and we pray for those that continue to have COVID. May you give us your strength and peace as a country. And in all the things and in all times and in all places, Lord, we pray for your forgiveness for the things that we have left undone or the things that we have done. And so too, as we seek your forgiveness, Lord, give us hearts of forgiveness. Lord, that we would not hold anything against your people, but we would work for your peace through the grace that comes from forgiveness and newness. Indeed, Lord God, we pray for healing and peace for us and our families and our community and our country. Lord, send us your peace. May your spirit lead ahead so that even in wearisome, even in joy, even in the midst of a pandemic, we would be faithful to you. We would be your people and your church. May you lead us in the name of Christ, just as we pray in the name of Jesus, praying as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our sins. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 So in, indeed, as we continue to look into this theme of thanksgiving, the more I think about it, the more I realize that it's, it's the practice of thanksgiving that changes my heart. On days that are difficult, it is good to take a moment and breathe and just say, you know what, let me focus on what I do have, let me focus on the things that are present. Uh, and that doesn't fix the stuff that's broken, that doesn't fix the stuff that's difficult. Um, but from my perspective, it has always given me, uh, I feel like I'm, when I'm standing in a more sturdy place, <laughs> I am more able to take on the things that are around me. And that's part of what gratitude does, is gratitude grounds us, grounds us in our hope, grounds us in our faith, it grounds us in the promises of God, and it grounds us in that connection, in that space. Last week, we talked about how gratitude is something that we practice even when it's difficult. Gratitude is something that when we practice, it is, it is good for us. In all times and places, when we are grateful and we practice it and we say it and we're thankful, um, it's good for our hearts, it's good for those around us. And also, today we're going to look at the heart of God. And because I think sometimes we get caught up, again, we get caught up in this idea of gratitude or spiritual disciplines or the many things we do, like it is our obedience and we get caught up in like us. But really, at the end of the day, worship is supposed to bring us into the heart of God. And I forget sometimes that part of the whole reason we're seeking faithfulness, part of the whole reason we do things like come to church or send prayers up to God, part of it is just the simple, the simplicity of knowing, you know what, it makes God happy. 
And I, I do think that's the case. I mean, we forget about that, that like God who made the entire world, God who is powerful, God who is epic, God who, yeah, I mean, who is like fire and, you know, all of the powerful things, like that God loves us. And I know we say that a lot, like God loves you, God loves you, but I mean like, not just like love, but like that, that like joyful, like, oh my gosh, here's Gary, here's Tanya. Like here, I mean, like this is, when we think of God, like that's not our general, I mean, we don't think of God sitting in the sanctuary and being like, I'm so glad you're in worship. I'm so glad you're here. But that's, that is the heart of God. I mean, if we, this is a God who created rock hopper penguins and platypus, like this is a God of whimsy and delight too. This is a God who does take delight in you. And I, I know my, my purest relationships, my, my, my deepest connections with folks are those moments where you can, you can sit with somebody and just, just be really glad that you're there with them. Do you know what I'm talking about? If, you've, if you have somebody, or, 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 or maybe it's not a person, maybe it's a pet, maybe it's a, a, like a gorgeous day, just that moment where you're like, I'm in this moment, and I'm just, it's good, it's a grateful moment, and I'm, I'm glad to be here. Or maybe even the, the gift above gifts is when somebody can drop by completely out of the blue. They don't need anything. They don't want anything other than they just want to be with you and say, thank you. Have you ever had that moment? Have you ever had somebody like, I mean, because I, I will tell you as pastor, I had, I had a week that was just really difficult. I mean, it happens. I'm, I'm not the only person that has difficult weeks, but it was just one of those weeks where like nothing went right. Um, I felt like I was behind the entire time. And then there was a knock on my door and somebody popped in and they said, hey, pastor, I just wanted to say hey, and just, I just wanted to say thank you. I know, I know you do a lot and I'm just, thank you for that. And I was like, oh, I think, thank you for that. Like, I, I mean, it was, it was a moment that just like brought breath to me. And I mean, and so there's something beautiful about those moments when somebody will drop by just to say thank you. If it brings joy to us, of course God feels the same way about us. Of course God takes joy and delight when we take a moment to say, hey God, I just want to say thanks. I just want to be here and, and say, hey, I'm, I'm glad that I'm with you. And in, in sitting in God's presence to say thank you, like God's delight mingles with our gratitude and it like echoes and it mirrors and it bounces and it multiplies. And it's just like, it's a good moment, you know? I think a lot of times when we come seeking connection with God, like that's, that's what we're seeking. is that space and that moment where we are just, grateful to be in God's presence and, and to trust that God is delighting in us too. You know, it's weird to think of God being grateful for us because we're just people and God is God. And so like God, like it's weird to say that God is grateful for us, but like I, I think knowing Jesus Knowing who scripture says Jesus is, like I definitely think there are moments where Jesus looks at the disciples and he's just like, man, I love you guys. Or like there's a, we're going to talk more about this story next week, but there's a, a, a story where Jesus heals a bunch of, of people and they all run away and then one of them comes back and Jesus is like, I mean, I don't know where the other nine are, but I'm really glad that you are here. Like I think there is a sense of gratitude like, God delights in us when we come and give thanks. And especially in those moments where we drop by just to say thanks to God. God delights in your presence. One of my favorite scriptures is from Zephaniah 317. I don't know how many of you, like, love the book of Zephaniah. Uh, but Zephaniah 317, it says, God rejoices over us with singing. I love that image. Just like a, a parent would like rejoice over a child and sing a lullaby or just be so glad that we're coming in that God would just sing. Like imagine that for a second. If we go like, hey God, I'm just here to say thank you. And God is like bursting into song. Like, <laughs> like, like theology in life is a real life musical. But I mean, why not? God made music in the first place. Of course God wants you to come. And not only, not only that, not only does God want us to come, but that, that is half of the heart of the entire priestly setting. 
right? And I know here I'm going to go nerdy, and I'm, I am going to look into the book of Leviticus this morning, which I know all of you are like, man, I'm really hoping for a good sermon from Leviticus. Uh, but the, the Leviticus model, part of, it's the priestly setting. It's all of the laws for when you, when you bring a sacrifice in this day, when you bring a sacrifice for this purpose, this is how you should do it, and it's full of like very specific things. Um, but there, the entire priestly system of bringing gifts and offerings, it is so that God's people will draw near to God, right? Because if God dwells in the temple and you have to go to the temple to bring your sacrifice, the whole point is to come near to God. Does that make sense? And so, it's, and, and there's lots of scriptures where God is like, dude, like, I love you, and it's important, and the sacrifice is important, but, like, I care less about the actual lamb here than I care about your heart and the ways that you go in faithfulness. Like, it's not just the sacrifice, it's about the whole system. God says that in multiple places. But the act of offering a gift to God especially in the the temple setting, is a concrete way. If you have to gather up your offering, travel to the temple, give it to the priest, participate in the whole, like, like, you can't just have a theoretical thing that you're not doing. Like, Like, that is a whole mind, body, soul, physical, completely concrete act of giving praise. Like, it is, it is thanksgiving to the fullest degree. And again, if, if you're looking at the, the temple model of offering gifts to God, we, we talk in the church, we talk about the tithe model where you're supposed to give of your first 10% or you, you are called to, to offer up your first fruits. You give to God first. Part of what happens here, if you actually look at the, and, you know, the anatomy of giving, I suppose, in order to give a 10% of something, what do you have to do first besides like have it? In order to figure out the 10%, what do you have to calculate first? Huh? The total. So the, the very first thing you start with when you are giving a first fruit or a tithe, the first thing you focus on is what you have. You start with the abundance of what you have. And, and what's beautiful to me about giving up your first fruits is like, I can imagine like if somebody has a really great harvest and they're like, oh God, here's my offering, here's my first fruits. Like, there's abundance there, and there's goodness there. But then if somebody is like, I mean, I only got 10 figs off of this fig tree, but, like, here's a fig. Like, there's still, like, even if it's a small offering, it's still focusing on the, like, this is what I have, and I get to bring this to God. God has been with me through this harvest season, even if it's been rough, even if it's been bent, bountiful. God has been with me, and so I'm going to go back to the God who has been with me and give thanks. The act of giving generates also the heart of generosity. And so, also, like, so there's the first fruits, there's, there's all kinds of sacrifices that Leviticus talks about and Deuteronomy that talks about, but there's one in particular, there's one in particular that is a special gift, and it's not it's talked about a whole lot in the church, um, but it's called the well-being offering, or the thank offering. It's also called a fellowship offering offering. Um, but essentially, it is an offering that is in the laws where God is saying, like, and you shall give an offering for this, and you shall give an offering for this, and you shall give an offering to atone for your sins. And also, by the way, if and when you feel like it, give an offering just for giving thanks. There is an offering codified in the scriptures specifically for that moment of saying, God, I'm going to give thanks just because. It's in there. It's in the scriptures. And in fact, here, we're going to read it. So if we can get that scripture up on the screen. We're reading from uh, Leviticus chapter 7. It says, This is the ritual of the sacrifice of the offering of well-being that one may offer to the Lord. If you offer it for thanksgiving, you shall offer the thanksgiving offering with unleavened cakes mixed with oil, unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes of choice flour well soaked in oil. With your thankful sacrifice of well-being, you shall bring your offering with cakes of leavened bread. Who doesn't love carbs? The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, Any one of you who would offer to the Lord your sacrifice of well-being must yourself bring to the Lord your offering from your sacrifice of well-being. 
Your own hands shall bring the Lord's offering by fire. You shall bring the fat with the breast, so that the breast may be raised as an elevation offering before the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, so let's break this down for just a second. Because I know, you know, I mean, sometimes, I'm sure when I was like, yes, with cakes of oil, how many of you were like, yes, delicious? No, not a lot of people? Okay, what if I said cornbread and butter? Does that sound, okay, that would be like the southern translation of Leviticus. God is saying, when you bring this offering of gratitude and thanksgiving, bring with cornbread cakes and lots of butter, oil, you know, same thing, um, and also bring your offering. And God says, remember there, when you bring the offering, God says, bring it with your own hands. Because in order to bring it with your own hands, that means you can't just be like, all right, I'm thankful, we'll send the servants. Like, you have to do what? If you're going with your own hands, what do you have to do? You have to go. You have to connect with God. You have to be like face-to-face, well, I mean, maybe not face-to-face, but like heart-to-heart with God to whom you're giving thanks to. And when you bring this offering, and it was usually um, like a whole animal from your herd, you're also supposed to bring it, and it says with fire. Bring it with fire. Now, again, I think a more accurate translation would be when you think of meat that is brought and also fire that is brought, what do you think of? Huh? Barbecue. Barbecue. That's right. That's right, my friends. This is an offering of thanksgiving that is brought to the temple that is cooked up with fire. And I love it. Did you hear that line in there that said like, and also bring it, like bring the breast with the fat, like bring the good stuff. There's also a couple lines that are like, and also like the priests will get the thigh and like da 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 da, like it breaks down some of the specifics of the meat, which like in, when you're reading the book of Leviticus, you're like, this is technical and strange. But I remember sitting down for family meals with my family and like when you're, when you're eating turkey or you're eating chicken, there's always that conversation of like, Nana gets the wings and uncle so-and-so gets the dark meat. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. There is that family barbecue coming together, spreading out that, that barbecue smell because, and here's the thing, part of the law of that special thank offering is you come You bring this gift to God, it gets barbecued up with the cornbread and the drippings and all the good stuff, and then God says, you have to eat it the very same day. So if you are coming with this big old gift of food and you're gonna give it to God and then you have to eat it that same day, what are you gonna do to make sure that that food gets eaten? You're gonna share it. So now, now get this, like here on one hand, it's an offering that goes to God, but when you step back and look at the bigger picture, the full scene, now God is saying, hey, I want to create space, and let me, let me just, like, if this would happen, it would be awesome. Like, let's think of obedience that way. Instead of God saying, you should do this, what if obedience is a little bit more like God saying, like, come here and try this out, and it'll be really awesome and good for everybody. God is saying, come. Come and be grateful. Come and give this offering, and then you're going to come, and it's going to smell like barbecue and butter, and then you're going to share it with other people, and then there's going to be a whole like neighborhood barbecue together that happens just because you are grateful. Come and, and praise me in ways that make barbecue safe for the neighbors. <laughs> Come and and give of your gifts and offerings in such a way that like your heart is full of gratitude and it spills over to the folks around you. Again, when God says over and over and over again, it's less about the offering, it's more about the bigger picture. This is what God is saying, is when you come and give the offering, I want to see the barbecue scene where neighbors are together. And especially in a COVID season, like I long for that day again when we can have a barbecue with the neighbors and it's just goodness. That is the gratitude that brings delight to the Lord. When we come and our gifts and our offerings are lifted up to God and they spill over in blessings for other people, it's good. That is the kingdom of God. Not just for us, but I mean, not just for us and and our neighbors, but also for the very heart of God to delight in that scene together. In the, in the typical day, in order to go to the temple to give up your offering, like it would have been a journey. Like we're not just saying like, oh, let me get myself up on a Sunday morning. This, this was a journey that people would go and they would travel and usually they would travel in groups. 
Oftentimes they would sing songs as they traveled upward to get to the temple area. And so even before they arrived, I mean, just again, think of that image of God's people coming with arms full just to say, God, we are grateful for you. Like that brings delight to God, partially because of the whole big scene, but also delight to God because you are right there in the midst of it. Like, God is the God of the big picture, and also God is the God of the specific. So when God delights in the offerings of gratitude from God's people, God is delighting that you are part of it, too. And again, that's what we do as a church. When we come and we are faithful and we bring our gifts, we come to say, God, I'm, I'm thankful for you. Let me, let me do the concrete act of writing a check. I know. I know, I'm going there. But when we concretely offer up things to God, that does change our hearts. That act of gratitude is part of the big picture. And when we give that to God, it spills over in things like, hey, here's my gift, God, I'm grateful. That becomes Wednesday night dinners for the community. It becomes a curriculum for children's ministries. It becomes notebooks and candles for confirmation students. These are concrete things. It is anointing oil to bless folks who need it. It is as simple as air conditioning in a sanctuary so the space is welcoming for folks who would come in and sit and need to hear some good news. The goodness of God spills over. And when we give thanks to God, especially when we give thanks in concrete ways, now, because again, hear me, it's the whole big picture that God wants to see. It's the whole picture of faithfulness. When God, when we give, and we give thanks, when we offer up our gifts, it's part of the whole big picture. And God delights in the justice and the love and the grace that is shared, and also God takes delight in you because you are part of it, you are in the midst of it. Even if you are just the one who is gathered because the barbecue smelled really good and you're here to sit here and be part of the barbecue, you're welcome. And God takes delight in you too. So indeed, God's people, let's give thanks to God. Not out of deep obligation. <laughs> let's give thanks to God because that image of holy, loving barbecue is pretty darn good. Even if it's a vegan barbecue for those who need to participate. Even if it's cornbread served with jalapenos. Even if it's in small, subtle ways. This is what gratitude and generosity can do, is pull people together. The church, the community, the giver, and the God who has been present in all of it at all times. This is our call to generosity and gratitude. So indeed, let us lift our hearts to God. Let's pray. Lord, indeed, we ask that you would move and guide us. We ask for a joy in discipleship. Lord, that we would follow after you, not because it's some new effort, but because you're, you're calling us. You're beckoning us. You're giving us a vision of the world that is better than the one that we see or hear in the news because we want to be part of what you're doing, because we believe that your vision for community, your vision for the world is one of love and justice and grace and joy. God, give us eyes that we would take delight in the book of Leviticus. Give us hearts that we would be gracious and grateful for our neighbors. Give us hands that would be open and generous to the poor and to those around us. Give us feet, Lord, that we would walk where you would call us to go. And give us that assurance that we're not alone, that we're not doing this to earn your love, but that your love is already given. And that we come to meet you, to please you, to bring joy to you too, O oh Lord. Remind us, Lord, of your love and grace. And so too, Lord, remind us as a church of the mission we have for the community your mission for building disciples, pulling others in relationship to you. Remind us, almighty and good God, that you are working in us and in our neighbors. We are grateful, grateful for you, Lord God. Thank you. In Christ we pray. Amen. 
I invite you to stand as you're able and lift your hearts. Again, in the pandemic, we're asking the congregation to, to not sing, but the choir is wearing special masks in the balcony. So choir, sing loudly on our behalf. Let us praise the Lord. Let us lift our hearts. the God of grace carry you forward, and may you go from this place and this time of worship. May you go and be generous. 
May you go and give thanks in ways that bless others and bring delight to the Lord your God. In this season, may you continue to wash your hands and be safe and gracious. May the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and I'll head out those doors. If you would like to take a moment to say, hey, I'll be outside. Um, otherwise, we ask that you just be very careful um, and social distance as you exit. You know, make sure you, you keep those six feet apart. So bless you. Go forth in grace and gratitude and generosity. Amen.